I've got one student who, from the very beginning of the year, said, I am dropping out. When I turn 18, I'm out of here. It's just a couple months, I'm done. At the beginning of the school year, I had one student who was homeless. He uh, was just bouncing around from neighbor, friends, family, and he came to me um, and we reached out to a business person in the community who owns apartments and he actually, he gave us a really good deal and helped to house that student. We have several students who have increased their attendance um, 10, 15, 20 percent from the end of last year and so that's incredible in my opinion. For the first time a couple of weeks ago, she said, all right, Mrs. Boyd, if we're going to do this whole graduating thing, then I guess we're going to have to get a few things squared away. <laughs> and I thought, yay! <laughs> if we're going to do the whole graduating thing, yes, we're going to do the whole graduating thing. Communities and School Program, we're trying to eliminate any barriers that keep children out of school, um, down to food, shelter, clothing, electricity, water. I found when I came that there are a lot of teachers and administrators that do for kids already. Um, they just tack it on to all of their other duties that they have to do. So communities and schools, I think, is intended to be able to focus entirely on meeting student needs. The communities and schools program in my school has really changed a lot of lives. Um, a lot of students that came in who were lacking resources, whether it was food, water, clothing, shelter, um, and other needs like behavior needs or attendance needs or transportation. And this program has allowed them to flourish, um, whether we're providing a resource for them or for their families or just helping them out at the school. And this has provided a lot of opportunities for our students who might have been at risk at the beginning of the year and they're now excelling at this point in the year. We began in the spring of 2017. We started with three counties, two of them in the southern part of the state, uh, Wyoming and McDowell, and then Berkeley County in the eastern panhandle. Uh, we started with that, then the next spring we added eight more counties, and then now we've added three starting in January of this year, so we're now up to 15 counties. We have counties that are calling us that wanting to become involved with it. It's such a great thing. They're seeing great success in the schools. And so people are coming to us wanting to be a part of this. With the needs of the students and families, I think my role is to provide support to families, students, and teachers, staff, however that might be. Um, because we focus on attendance, that's like my main thing. And so I can focus on getting the student here working with the other staff in the building. That way the teachers, staff administrators can do their role the best they can. So many variables that are working against these students to complete school. And if we can step in and provide some of, for some of their needs uh, to get them through school, that's, that's our entire goal. Uh, it's really, really hard for a child to come to school who's hungry and to sit in class and learn math problems. You know, their basic needs aren't being met. You know, food is such a priority. And uh, you know, the, there are backpacks that are going home on weekends. There's just all kinds of people trying to chip in and, and help these children survive and just do well in life. We have a program called Food for Angels, which is a take home uh, food. We also have food donated from local churches. They are some of our greatest supporters. Uh, students can come in any time of the day into the communities and schools room and get a snack. Often students don't have money for water or, or any extra and they can come in this room and get whatever they need. So it's my job to match up to find community members to meet needs that students have. So um, here recently because it's been cold, you know, there have been students who have come and said, our electric is getting shut off, our gas is getting shut off. And so I have a list of a whole bunch of community members that um, provide for these kinds of things. And because of that, you know, they paid the bills and they still have heat. Like we had our, um, our volunteer fire department in the Pineville area who just heard about the program and they will bring water and food. And then there's um, food banks, One Voice, it's just a multitude of everyone just pitching in to help better these children's lives. So we pinpoint the students' needs, individual needs, and then we try to meet those needs, whether it's through community partnerships, through businesses, local government, 
or nonprofits and faith-based organizations, whether it's donations through food or clothing, um, just depending on the need, we're there to meet that need. And through this program, it's possible to have one specific person in the school that just focuses on student success and then meeting the needs of those students. When I seen the success of West Side uh, Communities and Schools last year, I begged, pleaded, just told everyone we need this. And I was asking for Wyoming East because we only have two high schools. We were just so excited when we also got all of the West Side feeder schools. I truly believe this is an investment that can, um, the true efforts of prevention. Our future goal is for communities and schools to be in all 55 West Virginia counties. We have 40 more to go. We're 15 now and we're just seeing the success that the children are growing. They're feeling confident in themselves. They're proud to be who they are. And so we want to touch every county. We want to do as much as we can. And it's just so important for the state and the future of our young people.